Keep going, unless there's any questions.
I mean, are you, are you really, you want, you want, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm curious about your tone, why you have two digital delays and, and, uh, and you know, how you get your tone and talk about the carbon amps. Maybe. Sure. Carbon amps are really good. Uh, they're underrated, actually. Uh, they've got a lot of great features. I mean, you've got an EQ on it. You've got great a lot of top end, which I tend to overuse. <laughs> and um, I'm just going into a crybaby Wawa, uh, a super overdrive. Now, the DDLs, the way I have them set up is I have... The guitar, I've got them looped into the back of the amp, which is always the cleanest way to use an effect. There's no noise. It's pretty clean. And uh, I've got the one, the, the top rolling. Uh, the top rolling is, I'm using as an echo right now. There's presets on it, so you can do anything you want, you know. It's a slight echo. Later on, we're going to do a song that involves one echo of the stereo um, setup. Um, I'll explain more about it later. But then the other car, the other um, Roland is being used to chorus, stereo chorus, the two bottoms. Here, I'll give you an example. Right now it's on 10 milliseconds of a chorus. There's a bit of a chorus going on. Let's look into the next one. I've got like 26 uh, milliseconds of a chorus. <laughs> Okay, I was playing, um, that's an odd meter. That's a technique that I started to do uh, a while ago. Um, if you want to do an odd meter, say you've got something that's grouped in five, by a quick jerk of the wrist, you can kind of get it to sound like a... This is five. One, two, three, four, 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 five. Subdivided two and three. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one. Two, one. And that thing I was doing, I was going from a bar of five to a bar of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you can get your wrist to go, I used to have it down a lot better. It's, it's kind of crude right now. I haven't had much of a chance to do it, but... It's just a fast drumming thing. No. I'm, uh... I just recently joined a group called Alcatraz, which is a heavy, they were a heavy metal group. Uh, they're, now we're playing like heavy rock music, and I'm in progress writing material for a record that we're going to go into the studio and record very shortly. Uh, the guitarist that was with Alcatraz is a guy named Ingve Malmsteen. Ingve. A very great guitar player. He's got a, he's got a, um... <laughs> <laughs> He's got a solo group that's happening called Rising Force with a couple of his friends from Sweden, eh? And uh, they're really good. I mean, everybody in here, I don't know if you've heard Ingve or not, go out and buy the Alcatraz record. He's, you can learn a lot from listening to the guy. He plays very fast and very clean. And he's, he's like a Phrygian, a dominant, you know, pentatonic Phrygian guy. And he's just incredible chops, incredible technique. Uh, I learned a lot from listening to him. You know, I learned a lot from listening to a lot of people. The rest of the band is the same. Yeah. Um, Adrian didn't have any influence on me at all until I mean while he was with Frank. You know, I didn't. I saw the. I saw Frank play with Adrian when I was a kid. Um, Adrian's great. I mean, you know, he's he's got a lot of. Uh, he's not so much of a to me. You know. He's not so much of a technique type of guy, but he's, his experimentation with amplification and, and digital delays, I mean, you know, the guy's really got it down. He's got the old the elephant talk thing, the whole elephant talk thing. You know, you know? But uh, Adrian, yeah, black hole. And, uh, yeah, I've I learned a lot from him. Yeah. Well, I, I kind of developed this vibrato. It was kind of hard at first because it's very easy to go. 